It's been about a month since Apple revealed the studio display and somehow it's managed to be more controversial than the Mac Studio that it launched with. And that's probably for two reasons, the price tag and the spec sheet that on the surface seems underwhelming compared to the LG 5K display that it's meant to supersede. So what I'm gonna try to do in this review is not only explain exactly why the studio display costs a huge $1,600, but also why there are actually quite a few people out there who are willing to pay that much for this display. And before you call me crazy because this display has basically the same panel as the old LG 5K display, I can tell you for a fact that it does not because we've actually had the LG 5K in our office since it launched five and a half years ago from when we still work for Apple Insider. And if you're wondering if the studio display is truly worth the extra $300, I can tell you you right now that the answer is yes. But before I explain why, I want to give you guys my thoughts on the studio display after using it for over three weeks, so let's jump right into that. For the past couple of weeks, I've had this new studio display set up literally right next to my iMac Pro, which packs essentially the same 5K display that went into the LG 5K Ultra Fine. And let me tell you right now, the difference has been night and day. I won't go too much into the display panel comparison just yet, but all I can say is that I found myself occasionally mashing the brightness key on the iMac Pro because it just looks dim and gray in comparison to the bright and white studio display. But in terms of the overall aesthetic, the studio display just looks so much more clean and minimalistic compared to the iMac Pro because first of all, the bezels are much thinner and it obviously does not have a chin. The top and bottom are lined with circular vents for things like the speakers and the exhaust and I really love the shape of the stand because it matches the overall design compared to the iMac Pro and the build quality of the stand is unmatched because it's literally solid aluminum with a minimalistic and really strong hinge. Going around back, it's simply the most beautiful backside you'll see on any display, being incredibly minimalistic. So in terms of the design, I think Apple absolutely nailed their goal of making the display fit perfectly into their Mac lineup, especially with the Mac Studio. And I think there are people out there who will literally buy this display over other much cheaper options because of the design and premium build quality itself. And that's one of the reasons why it makes sense to pay the extra $300 compared to the LG 5K because that display is built mostly out of plastic, including parts of the stand, and that actually leads to a couple of different issues. First of all, it shakes and wobbles like mad, as you can see in this comparison, to the studio display, which sits incredibly still. On top of that, the bezels on the LG 5K are made out of plastic, which honestly makes it feel pretty cheap compared to the new studio display, which features a solid piece of glass covering the entire front, including the pure black bezels, which look a lot more premium. As far as the ports, the ones on the studio display are at least twice as fast in terms of transfer speeds when connected to an external SSD, which is really convenient if you want to use the display for accessories instead of buying an additional additional USB hub. And of course, it also supports 96 watts of pass-through charging for your MacBook. Now, another massive difference that I noticed was actually in the speakers, which are absolutely great, giving you very clean vocals, sharp highs, excellent mids, and a wide range of frequency reproduction. So as you've just heard, while the LG speakers do get louder, the quality is nowhere near as good. And the only thing that is a little bit lacking on the studio display is the bass reproduction that I wish was a bit more deep and loud, but other than that, the sound quality is excellent. Now in terms of the new 12 megapixel ultra wide webcam, I honestly feel like Apple made a huge mistake by going with the ultra wide sensor instead of a standard zoom camera because when you're not taking advantage of the new center stage ultra wide feature, the image crops in quite a bit 
which leads to lower than 720p quality that doesn't look that much better than the LG 5K. So I really think Apple should have just stuck with a standard 12 megapixel camera instead of going ultra wide. But nevertheless, I honestly believe that the difference in design, build quality, ports, and speaker quality is enough to make it worth spending the extra $300, at least for people who care about those things. Now, of course, we've also got a lot of display panel differences than the spec sheet would make you believe, so let's get into all of them. First of all, it's been confirmed through teardowns that the studio display uses a brand new panel, even though it boasts the same 5K resolution. And that kind of makes sense because the new display is somehow quite a bit brighter while at the same time having much deeper contrast. And I'm not even kidding. I can easily tell that the blacks on the old LG display display look a bit gray when compared to the darker blacks on the studio display. And that difference alone makes the colors pop more and really makes the image look a lot better. But going even further, Apple has dramatically reduced the reflectivity of the new display compared to the LG 5K, which by itself can make the display look a lot better, especially when used in a bright room. And to put the cherry on top, the extra 100 nits of brightness is a much bigger deal than I initially expected, and it's actually the reason why HDR content looks so much better, because Apple is using a method called EDR to simulate HDR content, and the extra brightness makes a world of a difference, looking better than many other displays out there that claim to support HDR, yet only have up to three or 400 nits of brightness. So with that said, if you combine all of those differences, then it's pretty obvious that anybody willing to pay $1,300 for the LG 5K should really consider going up to the studio display instead to take advantage of all of those differences. And a huge overlooked benefit of paying Apple extra cash for the studio display is that you also get Apple's higher level of quality control. Since there were many complaints of backlight bleed issues and other quality control issues with the LG 5K, like Wi-Fi signal interruption. And so far, the studio display seems to solve all of those problems. Now on top of that, another benefit that you get with the studio display is resale value because it's actually Apple branded and people recognize and pay for that because they know that they can trust Apple's build quality and the actual quality control, including how Apple does an excellent job with calibrating the colors out of the factory compared to a lot of other displays that require you to manually calibrate the colors if you're doing serious work on them. And all of those things that I just listed are the reasons why somebody would be crazy enough to pay $1,600 for an Apple Studio display. Because there are a lot of professionals out there who do photography, videography, 3D modeling, CAD, and different types of work, and they would much rather just pay more for a super high quality 5K Apple display that they can simply plug in and trust. And that right there is the target market for this display. So to someone who just needs a simple display just to satisfy the requirement of throwing pixels up in front of their eyes so they can browse the web, of course this display is gonna seem grossly overpriced, and for a person like that, yes, it is. And they'd be much better off with a basic 4K display like this 27-inch Dell monitor for $380 on Amazon. But nevertheless, I will admit that this display is still overpriced at $1,600, considering the fact that you used to be able to buy an entire 27-inch iMac for $1,800. And if you're looking for an explanation as to why this display cost $1,600 in the first place, there are two main reasons for it. First of all, inflation and supply chain shortages have been squeezing profit margins for many companies, including Apple. So the $1,600 price tag partly has to do with Apple making sure that they'll hit their target profit margins, even if things get worse. And second, multiple teardowns, including the one from Quinn at Snazzy Labs, have confirmed that the studio display is over-engineered 
engineered to say the least. In fact, this display is jam-packed with more logic board and various components than Apple's actual 24-inch iMac computer. But wait, this display is technically a computer because it comes with an entire A13 chip straight from an iPhone 11 to support features like center stage, spatial audio, and Hey Siri on Intel-based machines. So it literally runs iOS complete with 64 gigs of storage that is mostly unused. So technically, this display is a giant iPad, and Apple literally could run it as a giant iPad if they wanted to, but they obviously won't, because a lot of people would simply buy the display without the Mac, which would make Apple lose potential revenue. So yes, Apple over-engineered the crap out of this display compared to the LG 5K, regardless of whether you wanted it to or not. And maybe it's because it was initially meant to be an iMac, like Quinn from Snazzy Labs was thinking, as well as my own theory I posted to Twitter just after the event. So maybe we'll see a lot of these internal components going into the future 27-inch iMac. But with all that aside, over-engineered or not, I think there are definitely a lot of professionals out there who care about design, features, build quality, and control quality, and to them, the $1,600 studio display is going to be well worth the cash. So hopefully you enjoyed this review, and if you did, go ahead and click the circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one, and check out our comparisons right over there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.